Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. So what do I have going on for you for today? Today I am bringing to you my 2020 outdoor window paintings. This is a tradition that Kayla and I started last year because it was a tradition that my mom did every year for as long as I can remember. It was something that we really always look forward to this time of year, my mom showing up with all of her paints and her brushes and she'd paint a different window scene on our windows each and every year. And it was something that I absolutely loved. I always hated having to scrape them off and I'd keep them up for as long as I could. But I tell you, when she passed away about four years ago, it was a tradition that I deeply missed. And so Kayla and I were talking one day last year when I said maybe we should try and carry on this tradition. Now, I'm not quite sure why I initiated this because I am not as artistically inclined as Kayla and my mom are. It is something that comes very naturally to them and when it comes to art and painting and drawing, that is something that I am very intimidated by. It is something that is very challenging to me. But last year I decided to conquer this fear, conquer this challenge, and I was ready to take it on, head on, and try and paint these windows to carry on this tradition. After last year seeing that I could do it, I decided that this was most definitely something that Kayla and I needed to do from here on out each and every year. So let me quit my gabbing, let's get to it, let's head on outside and I'll take you with me while I paint my windows and you can see what I'm doing, I'll talk you through it a bit and I'll give you a bit of a life update. So let's go outside because it's a beautiful day and let's paint some windows. So this year I had this idea of starting off by using a dry erase marker on the window to sketch out what I wanted to paint. I feel like that was the biggest hurdle for me last year. That was what brought me the most intimidation was freehand painting something on the window because I'm not a natural artist the way Kayla is. Drawing and painting Freehand is not something that comes naturally to me. It is something that I feel like is a very, it's a challenge to me. And that is something that comes very naturally to Kayla. And it was something that came really naturally to my mom. It was effortless with my mom. And I feel like it's that way with Kayla as well. And so I figured that by using a dry erase marker, I could easily sketch it out. And if I messed up, I could take a paper towel and wipe it off very easily and keep going until I got the shape that I was looking for and so you can see that I'm just going over it several times until I get the shape that I'm happy with and so with this I am going with the snowman and you can see that I'm taking a paper towel and just wiping off that excess and I feel like that's the easiest way to do it. You know, drawing a circle doesn't come naturally to me. Drawing shapes doesn't come easily to me. But if I keep going at it until I get the shape that I'm happy with, then I can do it. But usually there's a lot of lines and mistakes that go along with it. And as you can see, I wasn't happy with this side of the head. And so I was thinking, okay, I need to go a bit bigger. And there I go wiping it away. So to me, I don't usually toot my own horn, but the dry erase marker was genius in this case because it was easy to fix my mistakes and get the shape that I was looking for. This year I decided to go with a snowman theme again because I just love snowmen. I feel like they're easy, they're basic, and so I feel like I can't go too wrong with them. Last year I did do a snowman and a Christmas tree and it was off the top of my head 
And I felt like that was a bit of a challenge. So this year I kind of scoured Pinterest looking for a cute snowman picture that I could get some inspiration from and visually look at and execute on my window. This is the one that I found and so as I am not going to do it identically to this picture, I am definitely taking inspiration for the snowman and just the gist of the picture. And so for this, I like to use a sponge dabber to apply my paint. I feel like it's quicker, it goes on thicker, it's gonna save me from having to do a second coat. And honestly, I feel like it gives it texture other than just that brush stroked, flat painted look. And so last year I did use a sponge dabber to apply it and I really liked it. And so this year I'm gonna go ahead and do that as well. I'm going to be putting a snowman on this window and the window next to it just so it's a full scene and I don't have a bare window off to the side. The paint that I am using is just basic acrylic paint. This is by Apple Barrel. It's very budget friendly. I didn't want to go expensive for this. I didn't want to use something like a Waverly paint because Waverly paint is expensive and this is going to be outside and in about eight or nine weeks I'm going to sadly be scraping this off and so I felt like last year this worked perfect so this year I'm going to do it again. Last year I had a lot of people asking me how the paint held up to weather. It snowed two times last year while our windows were up and it rained pretty hard and the paint stayed perfectly. We didn't have any problems with it it was flawless. Now to remove it, I had a lot of people ask if this paint damages your windows. It absolutely does not. To remove it, I just simply sprayed some 409 or Pine Sol on it. I let it set for about five or 10 minutes and then I took a paint scraper and it scraped right off my window. I think maybe it took me 15 or 20 minutes to clean my windows up altogether. And so it's a pretty easy uh, way of doing it. I never sealed my window. I didn't feel like that was a step I needed to take. It was something that I just wanted to do it as budget friendly as I could. And I remember that when my mom would do these windows, she always used acrylic paint and had a really great outcome. And acrylic paint is easy to work with anyway. It's easy to blend, it's easy to paint with. And so I think, and it's budget friendly, you can get Apple Barrel paint for 50 cents a bottle. So if you wanted to do your windows, it's going to cost you under $5, given if you're using a lot of different colors of paint. With this window, I think I'm using maybe five or six colors. And so it's going to cost me $3.50 to do. So yeah, the one thing I wish I would have done different on this, and I learned as I went, was I wish I wouldn't have used the dry erase marker to sketch out the face and the scarf here. I found that it was a bit hard to cover up with the acrylic paint. On this snowman, I did do it and it took several coats of the apple barrel paint to actually cover it up. I learned my lesson on the next window and I ended up using a pencil. Wish I would have just done that to begin with, but I think because I had started off with the dry erase marker, I was thinking, for whatever reason that I could erase it off of the paint and that is just not something you can do. Once it's on there, it's on there. And so here I am starting off by sketching out uh, this snowman scarf. So while the 10 coats of paint on my first snowman are drying, I'm going to go ahead and work on the second one and really for the remainder of the video this is the one I'll be showing because the snowman are very much alike. Their features are a bit different but other than that they really are the same. I'm sketching out this one's face with a pencil. I am doing the mouth just a bit different. Uh, I wanted the mouth to be kind of an odd shape to make it look like the snowman was kind of making a gesture with their mouth. And you can do that by just not making a perfect circle. 
and just taking some black acrylic paint and orange acrylic paint, that is what I'm going to use for To add a bit of dimension to this so it doesn't look like just a flat piece, I wanted to add some shading to it. And to do that by using a simple gray and just kind of shading along one side, it's going to give it dimension. It's going to make it look like something other than just a flat painted piece. Now this gray was a bit darker than I anticipated, but that's okay because just by adding some white paint to it, we can lighten it up. And if I can't lighten it up enough, but once it dries, I'll just go back over it with some white paint and start over again. Not a big deal. I actually ended up being able to lighten it up pretty good, and I was happy with it. And so yeah, just by doing this, it really does add a lot to a piece when you're painting. So for this snowman, it was already getting late. It was about, I want to say, 3 o'clock, so I knew I was running low on daylight, I decided to get brave and freehand the scarf. I think that I put way too much thought into the red one and so I knew that if I just kind of took my time and did it, I could get the right shape and if I didn't, well, I guess I'm painting over it again. This was a piece that I really wanted to get done on this day. I was starting to feel a bit under the weather and I wasn't sure if I was going to go downhill fast and so I will tell you all that um, I had a bit of a COVID scare and so I had to get tested for COVID because I was showing signs of signs and symptoms of COVID. My test came back um, undetected so my doctor wasn't really sure if uh, it was just because they didn't get enough on the swab and whatnot, and so I am waiting to get tested again. How am I feeling? Um, I've had a bit of a stomach bug. I've had a headache. I had a little bit of a cough, uh, no fever, but I've just been feeling really run down, and so I don't know if I have COVID. Um, if I do, it's a very light case of it. I just know that right now it feels more like a stomach bug than anything and um, that's about all I can say about that. So this week, if I have the opportunity, I am definitely going to get tested. But for the meantime, Kayla, Allie and I are just staying indoors. Here in LA County, there is a stay at home order that is being implemented again starting tomorrow, which is I want to say Monday the 30th of November because our numbers are so outrageous and so um, and tests are a bit hard to come by unless you have a doctor's order and so because I'm not overly sick and a severe case it's not something that my doctor feels is necessary I think just for now um, as long as my symptoms stay mild and I just stay home I don't really want to take a test away from somebody who needs it and I don't really have anywhere to go. Um, my main concern right now is just Kayla and so right now Kayla isn't showing any symptoms. Yesterday Allie uh, had a bit of a stomach ache, uh, no fever and so I just am ready for this to be over. Uh, Jeff is still in the motor home, and so we're just doing what we have to do and praying to God that um, our symptoms don't get worse if we do have it. The detailing that I'm going to add to the scarf is just lines, and again, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I like to relate things or items that I'm painting to specific shapes because I feel like it takes... Uh, the intimidation out of it if you just relate it to something simple that you know how to do and so in this case I am relating this to parentheses um, just by placing some slight curves in the scarf it's gonna give it the illusion that it's around and that it's kind of folding over and it's gonna give it character it's gonna give it dimension and that really is the traits that you're looking for when you're trying to make something look realistic or bring something to life in a painting. 
So I start off with just kind of rough lines. I wasn't really into blending them right now. I just wanted to get them put down and later on I'm gonna go back over them with a second coat, blend them, lighten them up and kind of fade them in. I didn't just want to leave the scarf unfinished. I knew that I somehow needed to add the strings to the bottom of the scarf that hang, but that just felt like too much of a challenge to me. I didn't know how to go about doing strings with lines. I had already tried. It looked horrendous, so I just went ahead and painted over it. And so the only thing that I could think of was to do kind of a dry brush stroke with the light green and the dark green and kind of give it that fuzzy, unraveled look. I knew that I could achieve that easily, and so that is what I am doing for the bottom of the scarves. And I gotta say, I was pretty happy with the way they turned out. Once the base coat of orange dried on my snowman, I went back in, I applied a second coat of orange, and before the orange dried, I just wanted to highlight the top of the nose, and you can easily do that just by taking some white paint and kind of blending it in to the orange while it's wet. And again, this is just gonna give it a bit of dimension and character and make it more like something that's painted instead of just a flat painted snowman. If it seems like I'm jumping around, it really is because I am, because I'm waiting for pieces and parts of this to dry. And so while parts are drying, I'm moving on to other parts. And so here, just taking some black acrylic paint, I'm gonna outline the scarf and by outlining it, it's gonna differentiate between the scarf that goes around the neck and the piece that is hanging down. It's just adding that fine detailing that makes all the difference. And so I'm gonna outline the outside of it as well. So yeah, I took a break for dinner. It is now dark, so I've got my ring light out here because I am determined to finish this. Can I just tell you, Kayla finished hers a while ago and she went on to do a second one. Don't forget to head on over to her channel to see what her windows look like because her windows are amazing. She is a true artist and so you can find the link again to her video in the description box below. But like I said, I was determined to finish this. I think it's about 5.30, 6 o'clock at night. It started to get a bit cooler, and so my paint isn't drying as fast as it was during the day. It was such a nice day on this day, and that was why Kayla and I decided to do it, because we knew that our paint was going to dry quick. And so last year when we did it, we were out there with beanies on, gloves on, sweatshirts and jackets because it was so cold and it felt like it took our pieces forever to dry. And so we seized the opportunity of this nice day. It had to have been almost 80 degrees and really did it. But I am such a slow painter when it comes to this that uh, mine is going into the night and our nights where I live are really dropping down to the colder uh, temperatures. It gets down to about 15 or 20 degrees where I live and so at night it really cools down pretty quickly and so I knew that I just needed to get this done and I was about to enlist Kayla's help but there is that determined side of me that just said no I want to do this I want to do it on my own and I really want this to be my piece and I want to be able to say I did this on my own and so I'm finishing up this snowman by outlining it in black because again that's just going to bring it up off the glass just a bit and so here I'm going to go back over my green and I'm going to use the light green, the dark green, and a bit of white. I'm going to clean up the lines, really fill them in, and uh, just make it blend a bit more, give it more of a finished look. On the red snowman, you can see that uh, I just used my sponge dabber, and on the scarf itself, I did pink dots. I haven't finished outlining it yet, but... I really am just focusing on this snowman here because honestly, I kept forgetting to move my camera whenever I worked on the red one. And for whatever reason, I just kept it on the green one, but you'll see the technique was the same and they're basically the same, just the colors are a bit different.
And the final finishing touch that I'm going to put on my windows is some snow. I like it to look like it's snowing around my snowman and so using my sponge dabber I went in with the white paint and did just some snow dots around and then later decided that I wanted to add some light blue as well and so I did that on both windows. to tell you I'm pretty happy with the way my windows turned out I did keep it very basic but I think that when you take something and you keep it basic and you add some details to it you can come out with an outcome that looks pretty good and I'm pretty happy with my outcome I gotta tell you as we were painting the windows the UPS guy stopped in his truck and told us that he really liked the idea of our windows and said that we were doing a good job and it made him smile and it really put him into the holiday spirit and it makes me happy to know that. It makes me happy to see on my ring doorbell when the delivery people are coming and dropping things off, how they take notice of the windows and it makes them smile and they like it. And that really is just the sole purpose of it is spreading my mom's joy and her tradition and making people smile at this time of year. I hope you all enjoyed me taking you along with me while I painted my windows this year for 2020. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to, you guessed it, 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive please.